In this example, we have data on nearly 3,000 US companies, and we're supposed to estimate the effect of size on returns, controlling for sector in which the company operates. So the dependent variable is a return, and we regress that on the intercept plus size, plus we have 11 different sectors, so we need 10 different uh, dummies capturing the effect of a sector. The first sector we're going to include is uh, basic plus beta 3 times capital plus beta 4 times consumer durables plus beta 5 times uh, consumer non-durables plus beta 6 times uh, consumer services plus beta 7 times energy plus beta 8 times finance plus beta 9 times uh, transportation plus uh, beta 10 health plus beta 11 utility. So this is 10, uh, this is 9. Okay, um, so the first question is, uh, is this uh, regression jointly uh, significant? Um, so uh, the null hypothesis uh, to answer this question uh, is uh, whether all slope coefficients are jointly equal to zero. So that means beta one equals zero, beta two, equals zero, ta, 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 all the way to beta 11 being equal to zero. Um, this is against the alternative of uh, not uh, H0. This is just uh, an overall F-test <clears throat> with the uh, number of uh, restrictions here is uh, 11. Uh, the overall F-test is done automatically uh, by the uh, computer. So if I stop uh, annotating uh, for a minute and uh, go to our studio cloud and I uh, load in, uh, I know that I'm going to need the uh, tidyverse uh, package uh, for these problems. Uh, so I'm going to load uh, that uh, library in. I'm going to load the firm's data and I'm going to estimate uh, the regression that I just uh, outlined here with returns as the dependent variable size, basic capital, and so on. All the, uh, 10 different uh, sectoral dummies as independent variable. Uh, I can uh, calculate the summary. And in the summary, uh, I see that the F statistic is uh, 15 with a p-value that's uh, essentially close to, well, essentially zero. And so I can uh, conclude uh, that, back to annotating, uh, that uh, the uh, F uh, statistic is um, equal to uh, 15, which is greater than uh, the critical value with uh, 11 degrees of uh, freedom. Uh, and we would have to look that up uh, in uh, tables, uh, which we can do uh, by uh, going over into our packet. Uh, so with uh, 11 degrees, uh, well, with 11 uh, restrictions, the critical value is uh, 1.79 and uh, so going back uh, to our uh, problem uh, and uh, annotating again, uh, we find this is a uh, critical value is 1.79. Uh, the calculated F statistic is bigger than the critical value. Therefore, we reject 
uh, H0 and conclude that the regression is statistically, jointly statistically significant. So yes, reg is jointly significant. Okay. Fantastic. So that's pretty straightforward. That's an overall uh, F test. The next question is uh, Are the sector dummies jointly significant? Um, so uh, the sector dummies, those are the 10 dummies that begin with uh, beta 2 all the way to beta uh, 11. And so uh, let's use a different color here. Um, the null hypothesis here is that uh, beta 2 equals 0 and beta 3 equals 0, ta, 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 all the way to beta 11 uh, being equal to 0. How many restrictions do we have? Well, we got uh, 10 uh, restrictions against the alternative of not uh, H0. So this is the first F-test that we uh, introduced, uh, where we are testing whether a subset of slope coefficients is jointly uh, significant. The test statistic for this is uh, an F statistic, um, where we compare the sum of squared residuals from the restricted and from the unrestricted model. Um, the unrestricted model is, of course, the one uh, where the uh, all the uh, sectoral dummies are included. The restricted model is one where we apply uh, these uh, restrictions. So the restricted model uh, would look uh, like this. Um, it would be just uh, returns regressed on the intercept, beta 1 size, and then uh, all of these uh, beta 2 through beta 11 are set equal to 0. So this model here, that's our uh, restricted model. So in uh, our studio cloud or in uh, our studio we can of course uh, estimate uh, these models. So going here uh, we have uh, estimated the uh, unrestricted model. Uh, I have it uh, set up here to estimate uh, the restricted model where the only dependent variable, well sorry independent variable is uh, size. I can, of course, uh, look at the, the summary. I can get the sum of squared residuals from the unrestricted model. That was the first model. Sum of squared residuals from the restricted model, uh, obviously. The sum of squared residuals from the restricted model is larger than from the unrestricted model. I can plug it all in uh, to the F uh, statistic using uh, 10 as the number of restrictions. That's for Q equals 10. Um, K, number of slope coefficients in the unrestricted model is 11. The number of observations is 2,613. And when uh, I uh, calculate it, I get uh, the test statistic of uh, 16. So going back uh, to our slide and uh, annotating again, uh, I get uh, the calculated statistic is 16, which is definitely bigger than the critical value with uh, 10 uh, degrees of freedom uh, at 5% of level of significance is uh, 1.83. Uh, and so we definitely uh, reject a zero. Uh, and conclude that uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, dummies, the sectoral dummies, I can say, I'm sure, maybe I can spell it out, uh, sectoral dummies are statistically uh, significant. All right, fantastic. Now, uh, let's look at the, the next problem. Uh, and I'll switch to color again, um, about blue. Uh, is the effect of consumer durables, consumer non-durables, and consumer services sectors on returns the same? So our sectoral classification differentiates between uh, consumer durables, consumer non-durables, and consumer services. And it may be reasonable to think that uh, perhaps these should be consolidated. Uh, in terms of uh, the beta, so what would, would that mean? Uh, it would mean that the effect of uh, consumer 
durables would be the same as the effect of consumer non-durables, which means that beta four would be equal to beta five. And uh, the effect of consumer non-durables would be the same as the effect of consumer services, which is beta five would be equal to beta six. If uh, beta four is equal to beta five and beta five is equal to beta six, then certainly beta four is also equal to beta six, meaning all three coefficients are the same. And that's what we want to test. So here we've got uh, two restrictions. Uh, so Q equals uh, two. Uh, the alternative hypothesis is not uh, H zero. Um, how do we test this? Well, this is a F test. Um, we again have uh, some restrictions that involve multiple coefficients. So we can do this uh, with a T test. And uh, we need to estimate the unrestricted model which is the old uh, model where we differentiate between consumer durables, non-durables and services against uh, a new model uh, where consumer durables, non-durables and services are consolidated. So let's write down uh, what that restricted model would look like. So that would be returns uh, regressed on uh, beta zero plus uh, beta one uh, size. And then it would still have uh, beta two uh, basic plus uh, beta um, three uh, capital plus, but then uh, we would have um, beta four times and then uh, consumer uh, durables plus consumer non durables plus consumer uh, services would be all consolidated into uh, one. Uh, one category. And then we would of course add uh, then beta five, what's the next sector, uh, energy and so on. Uh, and we would have uh, two fewer coefficients. Uh, so we would end up with just the beta nine uh, utility. Okay, so we just need to estimate uh, our restricted model, right? This thing here uh, is uh, the uh, restricted. Now, uh, to estimate this, we need to create uh, this new uh, variable uh, that consolidates consumer durables, non-durables, and uh, uh, services. And once we estimate uh, the restricted model, we compare the sum of squared residuals from the restricted model to the unrestricted model, uh, calculate uh, the F uh, statistic and um, compare it to the critical value. So let's uh, see how we could uh, estimate that uh, restricted model. Click here. Um, I will need uh, to create a new column, uh, a new column. Uh, I'm going to call it cons for consumer, consumer goods. Um, and that column equals consumer durable dummy plus consumer non-durable dummy plus consumer services uh, dummy. And to create a new column, uh, we need the mutate function. Uh, we specify uh, that uh, we want to mutate uh, the firm's uh, data frame, the data frame that has uh, our original data, but we're going to add a new column. Right now, our, our data frame has uh, 14 variables. Uh, once we run uh, this line using control and enter, uh, we now have 15 variables. Uh, we now have this new cons. Uh, column uh, that's uh, basically an indicator for consumer goods uh, sector. We're going to run a model uh, where we replace those three dummies with just uh, one dummy. Uh, we can calculate some squared residuals, sure. Um, it's a, a little higher uh, than uh, the very first model, uh, but a little lower than when we didn't control for any sector uh, at all. Uh, we can plug it into the formula for the F statistic, taking the sum of squared residuals from the restricted model, which in our case is a model M3, minus the unrestricted, which is the first model uh, M1. We divide it by the number of restrictions, uh, Q, uh, that's a two. And uh, that whole uh, thing is then divided by the sum of squared residuals from the unrestricted model, which is model M1, divided by N minus K. 
k again being uh, 11. So when we uh, run this, uh, we see that the f statistic is uh, 4. And going back uh, into our uh, slide and annotating, we see that the F statistic is four, and that's actually bigger than the critical value with two degrees of freedom uh, is uh, 3.0. Uh, and so we conclude, we um, reject uh, the null hypothesis. So we reject. Uh, H0, uh, meaning uh, that uh, uh, the effect of consumer durables, non-durables, and services is different. They're not uh, the same. So uh, the effects of uh, uh, consumer consumer durables, non-durable, and uh, services are different. We reject the null hypothesis that they would be the same. Okay. All right, fantastic. Uh, so that's the really the third uh, kind of test, the third kind of uh, F test uh, where we have uh, restrictions that involve multiple uh, coefficients. All right, we learned about uh, three different uh, F tests. Uh, the uh, first one we started with uh, was uh, just asking whether a subset of slope coefficients is uh, jointly equal to zero. Uh, then we learned about the uh, special case, the overall F test, where we ask whether all slope coefficients are jointly equal to zero. And then the third kind of F test was a little more complicated where we have uh, restrictions uh, that involve more than one coefficients. And there, usually we have to uh, create a new column, a new column that um, consolidates or uh, creates a function of uh, existing columns. Okay, uh, let's do a little uh, harder uh, F test. Uh, it's gonna be a version on uh, the uh, third F test where we have uh, some uh, restrictions involving multiple coefficients. And um, here I ask, uh, what if we want to consolidate uh, these sectors a uh, little, little further? Uh, what if we want to uh, collapse uh, those uh, 11 different sectors into just uh, uh, three uh, broader sectors. So we've already combined consumer durables, non-durables and services into uh, consumer goods uh, sectors. Um, we can also combine basic capital, energy, utility, and transportation into uh, capital intensive uh, sectors. And we can then group uh, finance, health, and technology into other. Okay, so uh, you're going to go from uh, 11 sectors uh, to um, three uh, sectors, and we want to know uh, whether we can do that. We want to test uh, uh, the two models uh, against uh, each other. So what does this mean? Uh, what does the null hypothesis look like? And let me actually switch uh, color. How about we make this uh, orange? So uh, the null hypothesis says, Okay, so first of all, uh, we already know that we're consolidating consumer durables, non durables, and services. So we can actually repeat, we can start with uh, this first unrestricted model where everything matters uh, and uh, restrict that uh, beta, beta four equals uh, beta five and uh, beta five equals uh, beta six. That's basically saying that durables, non-durables and services have all the same effect. Next, we wanna combine basic capital, energy, utility and transportation. So what does that mean? That means that we wanna do beta two equals beta three and beta three equals uh, beta, well, beta seven, uh, which is uh, energy and uh, beta seven equals uh, transportation. 
Yes. Uh, so beta seven uh, should equal beta nine. Beta nine and uh, beta nine should equal uh, beta 11, which is utility. So now, uh, so we consolidated uh, uh, basic capital, uh, energy, transportation, and uh, utility. Now, what about uh, grouping uh, finance, health, and technology into one? Well, the dummy, the sector that we decided to leave out in the original regression uh, was uh, technology. And so now we want to group uh, finance and health with uh, technology. But the technology is really uh, captured uh, in the left out category which is uh, captured by the intercept. Uh, so we will uh, basically constrain uh, the beta eight, which is on finance, to be equal to beta zero. We wanna fold it into uh, the intercept. So that would be beta eight equals uh, beta zero plus, so we're gonna do the same thing with health, not plus, so comma uh, beta, uh, 10, which is on health, has to be equal to uh, beta zero. So how many restrictions do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Q equals eight. I have eight uh, restrictions. I, I went from uh, 11 uh, different sectors to three different sectors. I, 11 minus three is eight. Uh, so that seems to uh, add up. Uh, I know what that is. Okay, uh, so uh, the alternative hypothesis is as always just uh, not uh, H0. And uh, now all we have to worry about is uh, how to estimate uh, the uh, restricted model. What does the restricted model uh, look like? The restricted model uh, will have uh, a return as the dependent variable, beta zero plus uh, beta one size plus, and now uh, we went from 11 sectors to three sectors. So we went from 11 sectors and 10 dummies uh, into three sectors and just two uh, dummies. And so we're gonna use uh, beta two times uh, the consumer goods sector plus uh, beta three as uh, the capital uh, intensive uh, sectors, uh, which is a combination of uh, basic capital, energy utility, and uh, transportation. Uh, so uh, this is our uh, restricted restricted uh, model. Okay. Uh, we uh, now consider only uh, three sectors. So we need two dummies uh, to capture the effect of these uh, three broad uh, sectoral uh, categories. And uh, we started with uh, 11 coefficients. Um, we had eight restrictions and that brought us down uh, to just three uh, slope uh, coefficients. How can we implement this? Well, uh, we just we will need to create uh, a new uh, column. We're going to need to create a new column uh, that uh, consolidates those capital intensive uh, sectors and uh, we're going to call them uh, cap uh, int. How do I do that uh, in uh, our studio? I again uh, create a new column uh, using the function mutate, call it uh, cap int, which is the sum of uh, the basic dummy, capital dummy, energy dummy, utility dummy, and uh, transportation dummy. Uh, I uh, estimate uh, the restricted model, that's our fourth model, uh, with just the consumer goods uh, dummy and the capital intensity or capital intensive uh, sectors uh, dummy. Here's the uh, summary of uh, the results. Here's the sum of squared residuals. Uh, here is uh, the calculation of the uh, F uh, statistic. The F statistic compares the restricted model, which is model four, 
to the unrestricted model, which is model one, the model with all the 11 uh, sectoral dummies divided by Q, which is eight, that whole thing divided by the unrestricted sum of squared residuals, uh, divided by the number of observations minus uh, K, which is the number of slope coefficients in the unrestricted model. The test statistic came out to be 18. And, uh, and uh, let's see if we can fit. Uh, we probably can't, uh, but uh, well, let's, uh, let's try. I'm gonna do it uh, in a, a slightly different color uh, so that we see the differences. Uh, so the F statistic that we uh, calculated was, uh, let's see, now I forgot how much it was. Uh, it was 18, yes, 18, 18.9. Um, so let's go here, 18, uh, annotate, uh, 18.9, which is greater uh, than the critical value with eight restrictions. And I can look this up in tables um, with uh, eight restrictions, the critical value is 1.94, uh, which means we reject H zero, uh, eighteen point nine. The calculated F statistic is bigger than the critical value, so we reject H zero. That uh, uh, we can consolidate uh, these uh, sectors into these broader categories. Uh, we should keep those fine categories and not consolidate them because uh, these restrictions are just not valid. The effect of consumer durables and non-durables is different. The effect of uh, uh, technology and health is different from uh, the effect of finance and uh, basic and so on. So it's, we should not uh, be consolidating uh, those uh, uh, sectors. Um, and, uh, and that's how we do a variety of uh, F-tests. Uh, the key is always uh, to know uh, what is the null hypothesis, which coefficients we are restricting to be equal to zero, or which coefficients we are restricting to be equal to each other, or to be equal to um, the opposite uh, of each other, to the negative of some other coefficients, as you may have to do in uh, tonight's uh, quiz, and uh, then construct uh, the uh, restricted model by plugging in uh, the restrictions uh, into the unrestricted model, estimate it, compare the sum of squared residuals, plug it into the uh, F statistic and uh, either reject or accept the null hypothesis. So I'm gonna stop here. And uh, if, certainly if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email, come to my office hours.